What's up guys? So before the video starts, I want to give a quick shout out to these three people for commenting on the last video. Oh, and if you want to be shouted out in the next video, all you have to do in the comments down below is put George. That's the father of Ethan Page. The GOAT. This man. He's huge. Big fella. Okay. I see you, George. Comment George down below when you shout out in the next video. Subscribe. What's up, YouTube? Right now, I'm here with a Canadian all-star. I'm here with one, one half of the former Impact Tag Team Champions longest reigning two. That, that's important. That's legendary. I'm here with all ego, the greatest Canadian wrestler of all time. Yup, I'm saying it. Whoa! Paige, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, so, sorry to jump my intro there. <laughs> you call me the greatest of all time. Yeah. You're going to get a pop out of me for sure. Had to, had to. How's it going? Good. I'm, I'm great, man. I'm great. I just did a bunch of interviews. I was telling you off the air, but, uh, you know, we don't got the PR for impact in my ear on this one. So let's get a little crazy. Plus you just gave me a better intro than everyone that interviewed me an hour ago. Wow. So like, I'm extra hype about this. Look how happy you are. I'm so excited to do I'm very this. Happy. I'm very happy. I'm a big fan of impact wrestling. And a lot of people are right now too. Yep. And one thing I happen to notice on your Instagram, you've been, you've been cutting a lot of weight. I see. You I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. How's the transformation been going? Okay. <laughs> Go to the show. Yeah. I tried to drop that thirst on you in the video there. Yeah, for the dirt sheets. I saw that tweet. <laughs> How crazy is that that the dirt sheets ran a story that I was showing too much of my skin? I, I wear underwear to wrestle in on national television. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, it was, it was interesting. Cause like, I, I wouldn't expect a dirt sheet to run a story about a wrestler not wearing a shirt or whatever. <laughs> and that's their job. Like, it's, it's, it's a different type dynamic, I guess. But like, when it comes to your transformation, how did you lose all the weight? Like Everyone has a secret. So what did you do? It's not a secret. And you know what this whole process has taught me is I used to be very judgmental of people. And I used to be like, oh, that guy has good genetics. <laughs> I was like always like my go-to or like, oh, I bet he doesn't have to work hard. It's like, no, like I had to work so hard, diet so hard, and just not cheat. Uh, very select days. I want to say I've had three full out cheat days in the last two months and wow. i'm gonna go on a month stretch until the tv tapings in august okay. so i've got about two weeks left come back have another full cheat day so like the stretches of eating healthy and working out every single day there's not a day i take off um it's a lot of work so <laughs> there is no secret i wish there was i really really wish there was i was looking for one for 15 years that's why i got fat so <laughs> i found out no secret just gotta work hard and uh yeah I, I i will be doing a vlog soon literally in detail telling people what i did just in case they want to duplicate it because i did get results and it might work for some people but yeah all right well i mean going to transformation and stuff i mean i know you have to lift weights also my name's most man malcolm uh I, I do a little weightlifting myself i got a couple Powerlifting words over here, but not to brag. Not to brag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a good brag. I mean, it's humble flex, humble flex. Yeah. So what, what are your numbers in the gym? What's your bench press? What's your squat? What's your deadlift? If you knew how sad my gym was, you would die. It's literally, I have dumbbells that go up to 50 pounds. Okay. That's, that's the highest weight. So the most I'm doing in that garage is 100 pounds, plus whatever I got carrying around on my body. But 100 pounds max. What so about like I, in the gym though, like on the actual bench press? What okay, so that I haven't done in, I mean, obviously over six months well, yeah, because yeah. of the pandemic. Well, yeah. um, the most I've ever benched was, I want to say three plates and then a 25. It's about 350, 375, something. Okay, so yeah, so that would be my bench. I can maybe do two or three. Now, probably not, because my body fat percentage is so low right now, I would tear something 100%. But uh, I would say, yeah, 300-ish. Um, squat, same, three plates. I have, like, a ruptured disc in my back, or used to. So uh, any kind of free weights, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I don't got that range of motion. Maybe now. Like, I literally – I was just saying to someone else, I'm, I'm excited to test – this new body when things start opening up and actually going to a proper gym and yeah. doing full body workouts or f like full body movements and actually like seeing what I'm capable of doing now in like new skin to me, man, like being able to bend over and tie my shoe is <laughs> not having this whole thing in the way. It's crazy. 
life's a little different. It's a little it, all, different. It, it true, truthfully, it really is, and it, it's not something I really expected, to be honest with you. Wow, wow. So, also during one of your workouts, I noticed that it was a promo that someone was cutting for you for Slammiversary, and it was your dad. Yeah. By far, top ten promo twenty twenty, honestly. <laughs> So what are we going to see him on television actually managing the North? Cause like, it, it Yo, needs- I don't think Impact could handle two of us, okay? Look, <laughs> Impact's already got all ego Ethan Page, and he's showing everybody up. You really want to add the man that gave birth to me and yes. created me? Yes. Like, you know I came from something. Yes. Now you want to bring the origin of that on television? It would be perfect. The two of us with Josh Alexander, no one would stand a chance. And I don't even mean in the ring. I just mean I stand a chance getting spoken about or sharing the spotlight. You got me and George? Come on. Legend. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think he could. He could honestly probably even wrestle a match or two. Just, just Ken saying. Shamrock did. They're the same age. See? It's possible. It's possible. You versus George? Legendary. Fire. I'm never wrestling him. Why not? No, you don't do that. You don't mess with family like that. You're not trying to create problems that last forever, you know? That's true. That's yeah. true. But <laughs> well, you're a big fan of TNA wrestling, right? That's something you always grew up on. Huge. And there's only been one one-star or one five-star match. There you go. Yep. TNA. One star would be kind of sad. They, they five- might have had a bunch of those. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could recreate a five-star match with today's roster, with yourself in it, of course, who would you be against? Oh. Honestly? Not yeah. to toot my own horn, but us versus the machine guns, I think if there was a crowd having the title change, the match we had was flawless, in my no. opinion. No, it was uh, I think if that was at a pay-per-view or like a live impact, it would have got five stars. I said it. <laughs> but also with that, like you were, again, so a big TNA fan growing up. Did you ever get to go to the actual shows or do you – were you just more of like a strictly WWE or strictly independent shows that are around your area? When they came, I went, um, which wasn't often. They had maybe like a few house shows in the area. Uh, they had uh, maybe two or three in my hometown throughout their entire existence. But, yeah, when they came, I went, which is – it was fun, man. Like, I remember I brought my little brother once uh, to see an TNA show, and our tickets were so bad that – it was where suicide comes out of because they, <laughs> he would come from the crowd and yeah. it's just like me, my brother, a whole sea of empty seats going down suicide standing right beside us. I was like, wow, of course we picked to sit here. It yeah. was great. Yeah, it was great. Was he like your favorite wrestler in TNA or did you have like a certain guy that was like your TNA wrestler? Oh, TNA. I loved Monty Brown, dude. And okay. That's a different T- one. T- like I loved TNA because it gave people, opportunity to me at the time as a fan that wwe wasn't willing to give yeah like i think without his run in tna wwe might not have looked at christian like the star that everyone else did i I loved everything he did in tna and i thought he was such a huge star um especially being canadian i mean i gotta gotta pick my boy but yeah I, i would say christian abyss and uh, Monty Brown. Those were my three TNA. Uh, I was a big fan of those guys. Wow, Monty Brown. I have not heard that name in a while, too, so I'm glad you said that. That's, Yo, that's I've been cool. trying to get him to come back. Listen, this dude works out at the same gym as Rohit Raju. I'm putting this into the universe. Okay. Rohit Raju, impact wrestling superstar, mm-hmm. gets to see Monty Brown on a regular basis, and he has not convinced him to come back once i have known rohit for many years are you just lazy bro do you just not want the alpha male to return to the impact zone you don't want to watch him pounce moose so hard that he shits himself on television i hope i motivated you rohit to slip a hundred dollar bill in the alpha male's cheetah print tights and get his ass to come to the impact zone, period. That was his catchphrase. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that was pretty good. You're welcome. I'll send you the bill for that wrestling promo. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know I was getting charged for this. Okay. But, 
But also when it comes to Impact Wrestling, I mean, you were one half of the longest reigning tag team champions. So when you first found out, like on the day you found out you're the longest reigning tag team champion ever, how was, what was your reaction? How did you celebrate? It's a great ass question. I text Josh and I said, hey, this is kind of cool, right? Because every wrestler wants to downplay their success yeah. because there's always a wrestler with more notoriety waiting to stand over you and be like, uh, relax, you got a little way to go. Shut your mouth. But I'm just like, I've reached a point in my life where I don't give an F what anyone thinks of me. And that's why I'm just like, yeah, it's dope. The Rock tweeted at me. Like, I'm okay with admitting it. If anyone is the like, Rock tweeted at you? Oh, you missed I, that? I Maybe you should be a better reporter, bro. Maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> but like, for me, dude, it's like, we were champs for a year in a company that I watched as a fan. And like, if, if you told me that the wrestlers 10 years ago, I would have been asking for an autograph 15, 16 years ago, I would have been asking for an autograph that I would beat their record as champion in the company. That's pretty cool, man. I mean, of course it is. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, when I, when we found out we hit each other up and we were like, is this legit? And then we were like, is it in the whole company? TNA too? Oh, damn, this is a pretty big deal. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. We, we, as fans, loved it. And as professionals, we're proud of it. Of course, of course. Well, you, you, you mentioned The Rock. You said The Rock tweeted you. Congratulations. Maybe I should have done that, but that's on me. That's, but, my, that's my favorite championship I've ever won in wrestling. Oh, yeah, that's a perfect championship to win in wrestling, too. Thumbs up from Dwayne. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but you tweeted out recently that your four favorite wrestlers were The Rock, Batista, and I believe Scott Hall and another wrestler. I slipped in my mind. Macho so, Man. Macho Man. But why are those your top four? I mean, I can easily guess why. But like, why are your top four? Go ahead, guess. guess. Yeah, um, you said easily. So okay. let's see how easy. Oh, right. uh, The Rock, I mean, he's just The Rock. And you're a very talkative guy. The Rock is very known for talking. So I'm assuming it's that combination. Okay, right yep, yep. All right. right. Uh, Batista, he's in great shape. You're in great shape now. That's why Batista, right? Okay, Not hold on, hold on. Which photo of Batista did I post? He was in the wheelchair. That's a very specific Batista, okay? That is. That is. Um, the wheelchair. That is, that is a man that in a promo to John Cena said, he's too busy. Yep. Hugging babies and kissing fat chicks. <laughs> and I, he's my favorite wrestler forever. He's in that top four for life. He, during that run, the Kanye Batista or Boo yeah. Batista, Dude, he was unreal. Unreal. And he's very underrated as a wrestler, although he does one of the worst power problems of all time. Very underrated as a wrestler. And look, if he wants to come back and try and powerbomb me, I'm all about it. Try. See what happens. You're from my hometown. That, 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 one, <laughs> that one kind of hurt. Hey, if he's from your hometown, text his ass and tell him to get a better power bomb. That's all hey, I'm saying. I'll FaceTime him after this. Yeah. Come at, hey, come for me, Drax. I'm in the impact zone. Okay, so why Scott Hall and why Macho Man then? Scott Hall had one of the best punches ever in wrestling, uh, one of the greatest finishers ever in wrestling. He was the epitome of cool at the time. Um, I grew up with my dad thinking he was cool, so anything my dad thought was cool, I thought was cool because I thought my dad was cool. Um, Macho Man was just the ultimate character. And although everything that came out of his mouth was insane, everything he wore was insane, everything – about him was insane he did it with confidence and to me that is like everything about a star like dude even the rock if you go back <laughs> me and my wife were watching some promo this morning of the rock just like berating triple h and it like it sounds like a toddler arguing <laughs> at daycare you know what i mean like he's like yeah, 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 yeah. and i'm like this is so corny but I'm dying laughing because it's entertaining because of who is saying it, not what he's saying. It's who. It's who it is, and it's how they're delivering it. So to me, like, he's the ultimate superstar. And all of those guys to me are what I achieve to be in wrestling is, like, larger than life. But you're also, again, back to Impact Wrestling, I guess. Sure, yeah. <laughs> you're, a, you're a huge fan of TNA or Impact Wrestling as well. 
do you feel like you're gonna stay at Impact Wrestling for the rest of your career? Or <laughs> something that. You know, oh. Yeah. You're coming in with some fire now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're coming for it now. <laughs> um, I, I personally, I can't answer that. My contract ends at the end of the year. Um, I do not have a timer set. So it's not like I'm waiting for it to run out and trying to run away from the company. I, uh, I'm always open for opportunities and, and ways to grow. I want to see this company do well. I want to see Impact Wrestling grow. Um, if this is the place that I stay, I'll do my best to make it the best wrestling company in the world. That's just the type of employee I am and type of wrestler I am and type of professional I am. Um, do I see myself staying here for the rest of my career? honestly who knows money talks i want to get paid whoever's going to pay me the most gets my talents my skills my attention my efforts uh and my star power because i am a star i mean that's what i said greatest canadian wrestler of all time all time all time above brett yeah never out there now i never had a six star match you don't need one doesn't matter yeah i don't need one exactly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the last thing oh your youtube channel obviously you have a great youtube channel to you do lots of vlogs or vlogs thank and, you um, have you ever gotten in trouble like recording backstage or has there ever been a wrestler you don't have to say their name or yeah. promoter that just didn't really like the idea of you coming backstage with a camera and maybe feeling like you were trying to be bigger than you actually are or anything like that of course i am very like conscious of like paying attention to how people like react when someone pulls a camera out um last impact taping i didn't even bother filming backstage because there were so many new wrestlers i didn't know if they were comfortable with it so i just said screw it i'll just focus on who i'm hanging out with outside of it i think eventually we'll bring it back backstage but like like i respect people's privacy and everyone's different right like you have characters like rosemary and i i, I personally made sure to know she does not want to be on camera without her face being on and I, I respect her for that she's a true performer and uh she is dedicated to her character so i will never expose anything like that plus rosemary's rosemary who the hell wants to hang out with that scary ass lady and you know when it comes to stuff like that yeah i i respect everyone's jobs and positions and characters enough but i've never really had other than tommy dreamer's cranky ass uh complain about it really Okay, Tommy. You know I'm not even gonna get into that. That's that's between you guys. That's between you guys. I'm not a dirt sheet. I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> We're not posting pictures of you on our website and making clickbait. <laughs> hey, you, hey, Ethan Page trash Tommy Dreamer. You could put that up. I don't care. <laughs> it's the title now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But the last question uh, for all like wrestling YouTubers or people with YouTube channels in general, like, how do you feel like the evolution of your channel has helped grow? Uh, your overall career because i know at one point you started off and i was watching videos of you years ago and you were sitting in like i believe your living room with, like different contracts deciding like am i going to wwe evolve ring of honor and now you're just like you're gonna be working out with kylie ray and stuff like that so how do you feel like the evolution of youtube channel is important for a wrestler to grow and also just like a content creator honestly everyone's different and like i'm getting out of youtube something completely different than like say a sammy guevara who was one of the first ones to start uh, having a YouTube channel. I'm okay with knowing that my channel has not exploded yet and just testing a bunch of weird stuff. Like this week's vlog, I had a Zoom magician. So yeah, that dropped today and it's about 20, 25 minutes long. And this guy blows my mind and I'm just trying to entertain people from my house. Like, you know, I'm just in my basement right now. And uh, just to be as creative as possible with the limited amount of resources that we have because there's not that many shows and stuff like that so trying my best but uh everyone's been super receptive to the different types of content and i've learned that i don't need to lean on who is my guest i can now start leaning on ethan page and i know i'll have my fans come and if I have someone new, maybe that'll bring attention from their fan base and then they'll stay. Hopefully fingers crossed. They like me, but uh, yeah, I would say if you're up for the challenge and you're up for the workload, because it is a lot of work, you know, you're going to edit this after and yeah. it's tedious. Uh, if you're up for it, it truly helped my career. Like in ways I can't explain um, financially exposure wise, 
Uh, Impact at the time was not letting me speak. They weren't letting me cut promos. It just wasn't in the script and wasn't in the time for the show. Um, I guess it just wasn't my, my position at the time. So I went out of my way and gave myself my own voice and used all of their talent to promote my vlog. And I just showed everyone how entertaining I was. And it kind of forced Impact's hand to do something with me instead of just sit me at home. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the best way to do it. I mean, yeah. lots of people have done it. Find your way online and getting your own exposure. Well, Zack Ryder, I would say he's like the originator of it. Him and Cole Cabana. Oh, definitely, definitely. But uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much the entire interview. Hope Damn! You guys- yeah, I know. I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I'm trying to be respectful. Oh, you're a pro, man. I Look, I do feel really bad. You jokingly hit me up on Twitter about doing an, an intro for your video. Yeah. I said yes. I genuinely meant to do it. That's why I wanted to do this interview. I did not mean to ghost you. Uh, oh, it's complete. Okay. A million, a million things come my way on a daily basis. So I wish you harassed me because I would have loved to do the intro. And I will say, my dad, I went to his house <clears throat> to enjoy the pool recently, get my tan on. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear top 10 wrestlers to watch an impact. And I'm like, what the hell? And he's watching your video. Oh. Oh, the legend has watched. Woo! Impressive. Wow. So, the reach is there, man. You got you got my dad watching your vids, <laughs> which is literally why I hit you up. And I was like, damn it. I never did the intro for that guy because the video came out and I was like, oh, what are you watching? He explained it to me. And I was like, oh, I was supposed to do an intro for that. And he was like, oh, yeah, this is pretty cool. So, yeah, here we are. Well, thank you, George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can thank my dad. <laughs> well, that's the video, guys. Hope you really enjoyed. Where can they find you on social media if they don't already? Hey, the best spot for me, just go to my website, playbyjulian.com. You got links for everything. What I'm trying to grow most right now is my Twitch channel, which I stream four days a week. Check it out. It's awesome. That's a lot of time and a lot of, you know, moments with live ethan page who the hell knows what i'm going to say or what i'm going to do and it's a very friendly community in the chat and uh yeah give it a shot twitch.tv slash played by julian come and hang out well thank you guys for watching video really enjoyed make sure to like comment share and always subscribe i don't say subscribe i say subscribe it's, sure it's different type of stuff and we out here we going up like a thousand i'm a flesh just like a muscle man malcolm uh, we going up like a thousand i'm a flesh just like a muscle man malcolm uh, when it just like one two three if you like the channel this will squeeze if you like the channel this will squeeze if you like the channel this will squeeze